Welcome back. Senators Lindsey Graham, John McCain and Ron Johnson held a news conference Thursday evening to say they were against the so-called skinny repeal bill. All three say they want assurances that the House would go into negotiations on the bill if the Senate passes it. Listen. I need assurances from the Speaker of the House and his team that if I vote for the skinny bill, it will not become the final product. It will the, be the vehicle to open, have a conference between the House and Senate where we consider, can consider a true replacement. If I don't get those assurances, I'm a no because I'm not going to vote for a pig and a poke. This is legislation that directly affects the lives of the people in my state. I trust my governor. I trust his people. And he is looking carefully at this. Sean Sullivan is a reporter with The Washington Post. He joins us now from Capitol Hill to talk about this. And Sean, many GOP senators are coming out against this skinny repeal bill. What does Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell have to gain by getting this on the floor and at least getting past this stage? Well, he just essentially wants to keep these talks going. And what he's doing is he's going to his members, he's going to these Republican senators and saying, look, the substance of this so-called skinny repeal is not what anybody really wants. The policy is not what anybody really wants. But it gets us to the negotiating table. It gets us to a place where we can keep talking with the House. And Paul Ryan, the House Speaker, actually just released a statement a couple of minutes ago saying, we are willing to create this conference committee. So he appears to be meeting the demands that Lindsey Graham that John McCain, that Ron Johnson are setting. But he's also saying, look, the burden's on the Senate to come up with something uh, that can pass. So it remains to be seen where we go from here tonight. And just to be clear, when Senator Graham said he's not going to vote for a pig and a poke, uh, that is something sold or bought without the buyer knowing its true value, just for those who don't speak folksy. Uh, and Sean, you wrote an article uh, that while, while the, the revamped health care measure is more modest than earlier versions, it would still have a major impact on the individual insurance market. Can you just explain that for us? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it is a much more scaled back version compared to what Republicans were talking about a week ago or even a month ago. But what they're talking about doing is repealing the individual mandate in the Affordable Care Act that says you have to have insurance and you have to prove that. It's talking about repealing another mandate, an employer mandate. We're talking about uh, perhaps repealing a medical device tax in this bill. And we're talking about perhaps some other changes as well. And there have been estimates from nonpartisan uh, you know, agencies who look at this who have said, look, you know, this could result in many millions of people, uh, many millions fewer people, I should say, having insurance as compared to current law. So, yeah, it is a scaled back version of what we were talking about, but this still would have a pretty dramatic impact on the healthcare system. And they're not really putting a replacement in place, which is why I think people like Lindsey Graham and others are concerned that if this piece of policy actually became law, it would be very troubling to a lot of Republicans. And outside of this uh, health care debate, lawmakers are also voicing concern that President Trump may make a recess appointment um, as part of pushing out Attorney General Jeff Sessions. He's already said he has been disappointed with him. What would a recess appointment entail and what would the reaction uh, from Congress, especially among Republicans, be? Well, I think it would it would create a huge backlash against Trump from Republican senators. A lot of Republican senators have already been very troubled by Trump's rhetoric about Sessions, by his criticism about Sessions. A lot of them are close friends with him. They served with him in the Senate. They know him. They see him as a loyal ally, not somebody that Trump should be trotting out there and publicly attacking day after day. Uh, but the reality is the prospect of a recess appointment actually happening seem pretty slim right now. There are steps that Senate that the Senate can take to stay in session without actually officially being in session and prevent uh, this from happening, prevent the Senate from actually ever officially going into recess. So there are steps Republicans and Democrats are expected to take to prevent Trump from doing that, um, even as he is threatened to do so and molds doing so in his private conversations, as we've seen. And, and that's likely because President Trump, in the eyes of many in Congress, is very unpredictable. I mean, even his newly appointed communications director, Anthony Scaramucci, appeared to have the president's blessing in uh, suggesting, implying that Chief of Staff Reince Priebus may have been responsible for leaks. Uh, Scaramucci has since backpedaled in some of the language he used in making that case. But how do you see this 
latest episode in, in drama at the White House unfolding. How is it being seen uh, there on Capitol Hill? Well, I think you nailed it on the head when you said unpredictable. That is the way that Republicans in the Senate and the House have been viewing this White House, not just the president, but his staff, his close associates, his close allies for a while now. They don't know what to expect. They don't know when the president's going to issue a tweet or say something in a press conference or do something or issue some executive order that could totally catch them off guard. He's done it many, many times now, and we see this with this latest episode, this, this interview, this very, um, you know, a striking interview from Anthony Scaramucci uh, with The New Yorker, another thing that is catching them off guard. They didn't expect to see this happen. I, you know, I don't think Scaramucci is officially even in his job as communications director yet. Right. He's already generating a ton of controversy. So I think that Republicans on Capitol Hill are watching very, very carefully to what the White House does, what the White House uh, says, and they've concluded, and I think they concluded a long time ago, they can't predict what's going to happen, and so they don't even try anymore. Uh, the president's tweets earlier this week announcing a policy uh, that would essentially ban transgender Americans from serving in the military also was considered highly unpredictable. Uh, specifically, those who would be responsible for implementing such a policy uh, said they didn't know anything about it, and the chairman of the Joint Chiefs has said it's, it's not going to um, take effect, uh, essentially. What are the next steps for the president to implement this policy, considering you have resistance from some leaders in the military and even some in Congress? Or, or is, there, is this possibly the first step in a long process? Well, he has to make a decision at this point. He has to decide if he wants to double down on this to try to find some way, maybe through uh, executive maneuvers, to try to create this policy or at least some version of this policy. Or he has to back off and say, look, the blowback, the resistance, the criticism to this was pretty, pretty quick. It was pretty sharp. And, you know, we're not going to go down this road. And you're right, this did catch a lot of lawmakers off guard yesterday. Uh, it was reminiscent in a way of what happened earlier this year when Trump issued his travel ban and a lot of Republicans on Capitol Hill had no idea that that was coming and a lot of them really, really harshly criticized it. So it's a pattern that we're seeing over and over again. It's not clear which direction Trump goes after this. And uh, the president, we think, is predictably unpredictable. We'll see what the next few days holds. Sean Sullivan with The Washington Post. Thanks very much. My pleasure.